Hey guys, welcome to cycle three, week four, science experiment. This week we transition to talking about the respiratory system and our lungs, the role that our lungs play in our body. So question today would be, how does air come in and out of our lungs? Or your question could be, what are our lungs and what do they do? Either way works. Um, then you want to give them a little background research. If you have a picture of lungs, um, especially within the rib cage and its relationship to the heart, because the heart and the lungs are um, intricately interwoven. Um, and so that's always helpful to have a visual if you want to. Otherwise, just ask some questions. Get some background knowledge so it makes more sense when you're doing the experiment. Um, I would ask the kids if they know what the lungs are. Um, we can review from last week our science, what are parts of the axial skeleton, which parts of those actually protect our lungs that God created to protect our lungs. Um, that would be your sternum, your ribs, and your vertebrae, and your spinal column. And so each of those things are surrounding um, and protect our lungs. Um, what do our lungs do? Well, our lungs help us to breathe. Um, what do we breathe? We breathe in air. Well, what's in air? Why do we need air? Um, well, oxygen is in air. And oxygen, when we breathe in, what do we breathe through? We breathe through our nose. It goes down this way, which we'll learn in a couple weeks, the different parts of our respiratory system. Go, but we know it goes in our mouth and our nose, goes down and into our lungs. Um, and the oxygen, when it's down into our lungs, it gets transferred into our blood through little capillaries and little air sacs. It gets transferred into our blood, which then our heart pumps all around our body. And the oxygen is utilized in our muscles and in our brain and our cells um, to help create energy um, so that our body can utilize food and um, the energy that it creates. Um, and so our oxygen is needed for us to survive. We cannot survive without oxygen. It is one of the driving factors in, um, in the function at our very cell level. And so air comes in into our lungs. It's exchanged through into the blood, pumped through, and then when the body uses it, that blood comes back up to get more oxygen gets pumped back up and all around. Um, when it comes back up, it gets rid of something called carbon dioxide. And that is why we breathe out. When we breathe out, our body is getting rid of carbon dioxide, which is a waste. We don't want it. It's not helpful in our system um, in large amounts. And so we take in oxygen, heart pumps it through around from our lungs, come back to our lungs. We deposit the get rid of the carbon dioxide. Our lungs get rid of it for us by breathing it out. And then we start that all over again. Take in oxygen, breathe out carbon dioxide. Um, so they can start to understand the role of the, the lungs and why it's important that we even breathe, why we need oxygen. Um, yeah, I would, because today is a tutor demonstration due to sanitation and time, I would then um, have them stand up experiment with put your hand on your chest what is it like when you take little breaths take a really big breath what do you notice that's different do you feel your chest go in and out more and then have them run in place for like 30 seconds or a minute however long you want to do or jumping jacks have them do some exercise and then feel their breathing what do they notice that's different is there is their breathing any different after they've exercised well, yeah, it is. Um, it, we breathe faster and we breathe deeper when we exercise. Why do they think that's important? Why did God create our bodies to compensate like that? Um, and well, of course, when our muscles are burning that energy and using oxygen, we need more of it and we need it faster for them to keep working. So, um, so we begin to breathe deeper, get in more, get out more carbon dioxide and, um, and um, faster, we breathe deeper and faster to do that. So you can have them play around with that a little bit before you should do your experiment. In our experiment, our materials are tape, which you've got, 
pencil, pen, or marker, tubing, and um, water, a bin, your science bin, and a jug of water, um, which we'll use. So these are all our materials today. and We're gonna measure lung capacity, how much air we take in when we normally breathe, and how much air we take in and out when we take a deep breath or are breathing deeper. Um, to see if that actually is true, that more air is coming in and out when we breathe deeper. So step one, you want a piece of tape and you want it to go from the top of the water thing all the way down the side. You really need it to go to the very bottom of your jug, okay? So from the top to the bottom. And this is what you're actually gonna mark on to mark the level of air that we breathe out. So you want it to be able to be seen from the class. Um, and you as the tutor can demonstrate this a couple times to make sure everybody can see it well. Um, if they can't all see from the center, then you can fill it back up and always do it again um, and just make different markings or use a pencil and erase either way. So once you have this, you will need a helper um, and you'll see in a minute why that is. So you can pick a student or a mom to sit beside you. I would probably with the younger kids do a mom so that you have um, some good stable help here. So you're going to take your jug. It is completely full of water and you want the lid on, okay? You're going to take it and turn it upside down with the lid on, okay? All right, helper, I need a helper. Somebody help me. So you get a helper, and if you hold this please, so it doesn't fall over. And then I'm going to very carefully take the lid off. I don't want many air bubbles to get in there and I don't want my water to come out, okay? So very carefully take the lid off. Then you're gonna take your tubing and you're going to slide it very carefully into the mouth of the jug. Now, you don't want water to escape, but you also don't want to clamp off your tube. So once it's in there, hopefully it's in there, you just kind of want to hold your jug stable. Um, we learned we kind of do it at an angle a little bit, um, just enough to not crunch the tube or it doesn't work. Then you're gonna take a normal breath so normal breath in and out. Okay, then I'm gonna mark, so get it as straight as we can. I'm gonna mark where it went when I took a normal breath, okay? Now, I'm gonna take a really deep breath and then breathe out as far as I can. can't breathe. Now I'm going to mark again where it went when I took a deep breath. Um, and as you can see, thank you helper, the water went from here um, when I took a normal breath clear down to here um, when I took a deeper breath. So um, before, which I didn't think to ask you, but before you even take a breath, you could ask the kids, what do they think is going to happen when you blow into this water jug? Um, and then after you've done a normal breath, what do you think is going to happen when I blow as hard as I can to get every little bit of air out of my lungs? Then um, get their hypotheses on what they think is going to happen before you do it. Um, and then you've got the evidence to show. Now what happened here in this experiment was the air, when I blew out, filled the container and pushed the water down. So this is my air out of my lungs um, that pushed the water out the bottom. And so what did we find out? What did we, analyzing these results, what did we find out? Well, when you take a big, deep breath, we do breathe in more air and we breathe out more air or more carbon dioxide, that's what we're breathing out. And so it does make a difference when we breathe quickly or when we breathe slowly or deeply or shallow, it makes a difference in how much air is actually being utilized in our body. Um, okay, I feel like there's something else 
I was going to say, but I think that works. All right, guys, have fun.